Uh, we're starting to see a bit of pressure coming through, <coughs> mostly due to the resource stocks coming under pressure. Commodities perhaps falling off a cliff today. Uh, we saw the likes of silver down around 4%, uh, copper down quite significantly as well. Gold also having a massive drop in today's session. Do you think that it's going to be uh, the name of the game going forward? In other words, volatility in the commodity space, so therefore it's going to translate into the resource counters coming under pressure? Short answer, yes. I mean, and, and you know, the, we've seen volatility in resources. I mean, it, it was a story to a degree of 2010. I think it's going to remain the same in 2011, with that uh, proviso being that the trend is up. I mean, the, the commodities are moving higher, they're hitting highs, or there's about multi-year, in some case, all-time highs. And if you look at with the stocks, I mean, let's have a look at Anglo. I mean, off some 3% today, but still in the last 30 days, it's up 6.5%. So it's still having a, a really good run. They've been moving hard over that last quarter of last year. And I, what, they, what we're noticing is they're really following the commodity price rather than the currency, ignoring the rand much more just tracking the US dollar commodities. We were talking a little earlier and you were saying <coughs> that it's, it's becoming really hard to read uh, you know, when you should buy some of these stocks. I mean, with Anglo falling around 3% uh, in today's session, is it a buying opportunity? Should you wait for more volatility to come through and purchase some of these resource stocks? I, I think, I mean, if you stand back and look at the market as a whole, I, I, and we're sitting in the all share around 32,000, I think we can potentially get back to 30, maybe even 28 or 29,000. And that might not happen until April or May or a couple of months down the line. And I think that's going to be a really, really great buying opportunity. I think at the moment we're close to that all-time high. And we might even break it. I think we might even run past it. I've been saying maybe 34,000. I know some folks, I think Paul Thrawn at Vestac was saying 35,000. Um, but it's not going to be in a straight line. And then we're going to get that pullback, which will take us to around the 30-odd. And that's were, the buying. Were you part of the camp that was selling towards the end of last year because markets were looking slightly toppish? No, br broadly not. I, I'm, I'm not a big seller of stocks. I'm a big buyer of stocks. And at this point in the cycle, I and even those that have run hard, you, your, your big winners last year, and I'm thinking your retails and the like, we're not going to see as spectacular, but you know, that cycle's still there, that trend is still there. We're still going to see those stocks moving up over the next one, two, three, four years or so. So certainly I haven't been offloading any stocks in the last, uh, since sort of buying started in 09. And looking at Naspers, uh, you know, quite an interesting stock exposure to Facebook, exposure to Tencent, so even more of a sweetener for, the, for investors out there to purchase this stock. Uh, you know, we're sitting very close to 400 Rand a share. Do you think will hit that level relatively soon. Short answer, yes. I mean, it, you know, and, and is that a crazy price? Sure. Is it as crazy as Capitech? Not even close. <laughs> um, should we be scared of 400? Answer is no. I mean, it, it, it's a great story. They've done incredibly well. Th there's some so there's some bubble there. And I mean, I was, you know, the Facebook holding is worth two billion, which is a lot, but actually their market cap's about 150, so it's not that much. Uh, Ten cent people, I think, overdo it and the like. But the point is, it is a good story. And forget all their fancy stuff. I mean, just look at DSTV, which is just a you know a nice little print press in terms of cash flow for them. I think they're a quality stock. And what, what we can see, companies are about cash flow. They've got it. It's about management. And I think Kurs Beck is probably the unsung hero of MDs in South Africa. Mm. Uh, looking at the, the All Share Index, I mean, uh, you know, we're sitting at above 32,000 points. Are you talking about opportunities? Where could you find opportunity right now? A stock that hasn't really rallied that much, but has good prospects going forward. I, I think the story, you know, every year there's some sector which does well. I think we should start looking at construction, primarily because no one likes it, um, because it hasn't moved because everyone says With it's the end reason, of the though, world. good those earnings. Exactly. No, I mean, there's every good reason, but let's jump forward two years. And are, I mean, are we still building things? Is construction going to start coming back both on, on in terms of, of, of public and private? Short answer is yes, it's going to recover. It was really bad. I don't think we're going to get to the peaks of, of, of pre-World Cup spend and how train and the like, but it's happening out there. And I think those are going to be the places. And my preference there, Stefanucci stocks, nice and small, hasn't moved too much, and about a billion rand in cash with a market cap of just over two billion. So you buy the stock and half of it's in solid cash. We're talking about the ADP numbers a little earlier, non-farm payrolls coming out on Friday. What are your prospects for uh, jobs recovery in the US? We kept talking about a jobless recovery. Do you think that could change going forward? I, I think it's going to start improving. I don't think it's going to get terrifyingly exciting. I mean, jobs always lag at the end of a recession. They lag much more this time and I think because the recession was so much worse. But there's some very structural reasons in the US. Partly uh, US companies have got more efficient, they've outsourced a lot. Also partly just simple demographics. People can't move to where there is work because they can't sell their house or because both partners work and only one of them is out of work. So there are issues there. So I think we're going to see a, a slow improvement, but I don't think it's going to be fast, and I don't think we're going to get to that 5 or 6% number anytime soon. And by that, I mean, you know, three, five years before they're back at that sort of level of unemployment. Simon, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so very much for joining us.